This is continuing row reduction and gauss rodin elimination. The other video, uh, this is a re-record of earlier videos, but the other video showed what happens when you get a unique solution, and I want to show the other two case examples of the other two cases. Here's the 3x3 three three system with uh, three, three equations and three variables, and this you get this augmented matrix. And a little quicker than I did last time, we're going to do the gauss rodin elimination and see what happens. So the first phase, we work down from the top left to right. We leave the top row alone and use it as a tool, and then this is going to be the pivot. Okay, that's still 1, so that's nice. So this means I'm going to use 5 times row 1 and subtract it here, and 6 times row 1 and subtract it here. Okay, so 5 minus 5 is 0. 6 minus 5 times 2 is going to give us minus 4 and 7 minus 15 is minus 8 and 8 minus 20 is minus 12. Remember you can always do scratch work I recommend it 8 minus like 5 times we're just putting the number from sorry yeah the number from row 2 for example here minus 5 times the corresponding number from row 1 that's 8 minus 20 equals minus 12. Don't be afraid to do the scratch work Okay, here, 0, 6 minus 6 is 0 by design. 7 minus 6 times 2, 7 minus 12 is minus 5. 8 minus 6 times 3, 8 minus 18 is minus 10. And 7 minus 6 times 4, ooh, these numbers are getting huge. 7 minus 6 times 4. Oh, let's put that in math mode, it looks prettier. That's 7 minus 24 is minus 17. Okay. Alrighty, so um, here, remember, if you're doing gauss rodin eventually you want to get all the pivots to be 1, and I've talked about how you can, you can wait to do that if it's not convenient, but whenever you have a row like this where all the entries are multiples of the pivot, you're just going to make things simpler if you go ahead and do that, um, do that step now. So let me go ahead and copy down here, and we're not doing a row replacement right now doing a little quick opportunistic step which is just divide by everything by minus four so I'm just gonna put in like a minus one-fourth to symbolize that I'm multiplying by minus one-fourth okay so that's gonna become a two minus twelve divided by minus four is three that's very simple nice okay now this pivot is just much much easier to work with because it's just one it's the nicest kind of pivot okay so now let's go ahead and go back go down whoa it's going away okay so now I'm just gonna put in some question marks or some blank spaces here this guy has been done it's all set now what about here not the bottom row here row 3 minus some multiple of row 2 okay well minus 5 and 1 okay so now it's gonna be a plus 5 because if we take 5 times 1 and add it to a minus 5 that's what's gonna die okay 0 Okay, now here, minus 10 plus 5 times 2, that's minus 10 plus 10 is 0 again. That, right when you write that for that 0, you should say, whoa, this is going to be interesting. It's either no solution or multiple solutions. Here, minus 17, let's do this as scratch work, minus 17 plus 5 times 3, ooh, that is minus 17 plus 15 is minus 2. I'll just put it right here, minus 2. Okay. Now, depends on what you're being asked to do here. If you're just asked, is there a solution or find the solutions, the answer is no, because this says 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals minus 2. There's no solution, period, done. If you're actually asked to find a gauss chardon form, though, there might be other reasons why you're doing gauss chardon for this matrix, and it's not actually done yet. Um, and so I'll go ahead and just finish it off, even though most of the time you wouldn't really be asked to do this. The pivots are not all equal to 1, namely this guy's not equal to 1. That's really easy to fix. And there's non-zero entries above this pivot and above this pivot. Okay, so we, but we can fix that real, real easy. Okay, so in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and change that to a 1 right away. There's nothing else in that row, so you can just divide it by itself and it changes to a, to a 1. Now I'm going to take, let me get this as my little template. Okay, I'm going to take row 2, and I'm going to subtract off 3 times row 3. Okay, and that's just going to kill that guy. Boom. Since this is such a simple row, 
It doesn't do anything except kill what I want it, want it to kill. It's kind of interesting that with these examples how how much you can just get away with. And then here, <coughs> excuse me, row one minus four times row three. And guess what? That just lets us write the zero here. Okay. Now the last one is a little more interesting because we want to use this pivot to kill this guy, and then this is, is going to come along for the ride and is going to modify this. You can't just change zeros to or non zeros to zeros at will like we were doing doing there. So now we go down here, and we're done with row two. Remember, we're working from the bottom up. Now row one is going to be modified by row two, and so it's going to be minus two times row two. Okay, so this is not going to be two three anymore. That's going to be a zero. That's still going to be a zero, and here it's going to be three minus two times two, or minus one. That is in reduced row echelon form. The pivots go down and to the right. They're all equal to one. And above this pivot, zero. Above this pivot, zero. Below all the pivots are zero. So each pivot column is just ones and zeros in the appropriate way. So again, most of the time, if you're taking just a sort of a intro level kind of uh, treatment of matrices and stuff like that, you would have stopped right here and said there's no solution. Um, but if you wanted a more advanced, if you're doing a more advanced course, they might want you to do go all the way to here because you can say sort of more about sort of what went wrong or, or what was happening with the system. Okay, but I'll stop there. Um, <clears throat> so now let's just do one more example. What about many solutions? Okay, so for that one, let's just, I'm just going to steal this as a template here and modify all the numbers. We're going to have, let's say, one, three, five, seven. Another one where you're going to see a pattern, two, four, six, eight. And here the pattern is not going to be sort of mysteriously violated at the end. It really is going to keep going. Okay. So now I want to take this, uh, copy it down. But in fact, I'm just going to delete these guys. Okay. So we're ready to write those next two rows with elimination. And let's see if I can grab my template thing. Actually, let me grab a better version of the template. Yeah, here's a better version of the template. Bear with me for a minute. Okay, so put these question marks back in, and we're ready to use row one against the other rows. Once again, I've picked one where the initial pivot is one. I probably shouldn't do so many examples that are so simple, but oh well. So those are going to be zero. Okay. Oh yeah, this is going to be now two again. So four minus six is minus two. 6 minus 10 is minus 4, and 8 minus 14 is minus 6. Here, I'm using 3 as a multiplier. I'm subtracting 3 times row 1, because the pivot is 1 and the, uh, the target is 3. 5 minus 9 is minus 4. 7 minus 15 is minus 8. And 9 minus 21 is minus 12. And you might start seeing a pattern there. Okay. Great thing about doing this, though, is you don't actually have to be very clever, and it's, that's very important if you're programming on a computer. You can't expect the computer to be clever. Once again, um, you don't have to do it, but you might as well make these pivots equal to 1. Make that pivot equal to 1. So I'm just changing that. That becomes 1, 2, 3 again, because it's a very similar example. Okay, so now why don't I just go ahead and combine that with the next step. We're going to want to add in 4 times the new row 2. OK, so that's going to change this to a 0. That's going to change this to a 0. Minus 8 plus 8, aha, and minus 12 plus 12, aha, 0. And of course, I contrived this example. This is not a random example at all. If you choose random numbers, it's extremely unlikely that this is going to happen. We got a row of zeros on the bottom. To be more precise, what's really interesting about this is that I've got a pivot in the first column corresponding to the x variable, a pivot in the second column corresponding to the y variable. I got no pivot in the z column. There's no equation that kind of focuses on z and says, what's the equation that's going to definitely give me z? It just doesn't give me any information. So here, there's no pivot in the z column. And that means z is a free variable. Uh, you can always guarantee and count on that if you're doing this in the 
in the right way. Now, I haven't gotten to reduce row echelon form yet. Even though there's no pivot at all in the bottom row to work with, there is a pivot here, and it doesn't have a zero above it. So let's go ahead and fix that to get it all the way to reduce row echelon form, and we'll see the value of that. Okay, so let me just delete these guys because they're not, they're going to be modified. This guy is done. This guy is so done, it's just zeros. How could it be not done? Um, and now I'm going to take, let me get my little template, row one, and I need to subtract three times row two because that pivot is one. I made it one a while ago, and I'm going to subtract that off. That's going to make this zero as desired. Five minus six is minus one and 7 minus 9 is minus 2. That's reduced row echelon form. It, remember with the reduced row echelon form, if you have any rows of zeros, they should be at the bottom. And that automatically happened for us here. Um, and then the other thing is that the pivots should stair step down and to the right so that they, the, as you go down in rows, they go over to the right in columns. And that they should have just a 1 for a pivot and nothing, nothing, nothing else. They should all be zeros. For reduced row echelon form, zeros above and below the pivots. So why is that useful? Well, we'll write it back down in terms of equations. x plus 0y, in other words, nothing, minus c equals minus 2. And y, oh, sorry, y minus 2z equals 3. And remember, there wasn't any equation that sort of focused on z and told us what it was going to be. And that says z is free. And so z is going to be arbitrary. I, a lot of books, including me, usually say, a new letter to indicate arbitrary, that it can be anything you want. The, the reason for that, you, some people think that's very weird, and it is a little weird, but the reason is that x, y, and z have been present from the start of the problem. Okay, I didn't write down the x, y, and z here, but you know, for example, what we have here. They're present from the start of the problem. They're variables, they're unknowns, but we expect that they really don't have a definite value, it's just we don't know them yet. Like in this example, the first example, well, actually in the, the one in the other video, they had definite values. They couldn't be anything. It's just we didn't happen to know them yet. And so it's nice to keep that role for x, y, and z. That x, y, and z, if we don't change the letters, we want to think of them as things that we can, in principle, figure out. But t is supposed to indicate a new, a new feel to it, that it's really arbitrary. It's whatever you want. And it can be really helpful to have a new letter to indicate that. And, and la later on, if you do more linear algebra, it really becomes essential to have that freedom to distinguish between the t that's the source of the arbitrariness and the z that you're surprised to discover is arbitrary. OK, so z we just set to be whatever, and we call it t. And then we can solve for y and x in terms of z very easily. y is just going to be 3 plus 2z. And, and so that's going to be 3 plus 2t to emphasize that now y is, is inheriting this choice. It just it can't be anything it wants, but it's going to be different depending on the different choices I have for z. And then x is minus 2 plus z, or in other words, it's minus 2 plus t. And a very nice way to write this is in terms of like a column vector. Let me steal this to build a column vector in an easy way. Um, just delete all this. So the variable vector x, y, z is now discovered to be something where z is just t, y is 3 plus 2t. Notice that's a 3. I have to be careful to not switch the order and stuff here. Here, here I happen to go backwards, z, y, x, and now I just want to make sure I don't get them mixed up when I put them in. Okay. That can also be written in a kind of a, often a nicer way, separating out the constant part plus t times the vector that tells us the variable part. So you have to start with minus 2, 3, 0, and then you add some multiple of this vector 1, 2, 1. So if you're in a little more sophisticated treatment, they're going to emphasize this where you have a constant vector plus t times a, uh, another constant vector. It gives you a line in three-dimensional space. It's a very natural way to parameterize the line. So ignore this if you're not doing this kind of thing in your class. But that's what uh, that, this description helps you to understand. The thing I want to emphasize to stop with this video, though, just to, to finish up, is that the numbers that we see in the reduced echelon form, this is where we got to reduced echelon form, the minus 2 and the 3 appear exactly in the solution. The minus 1 and the 2 
appeared. Uh, oops. Oh, I knew I was going to make a mistake. That's a plus. You guys all probably noticed that. And so then this is a minus. Oh, shoot. I don't have to redo this, though. So. There we go. Um, so when I get the, I get the signs right, actually, these numbers here show up exactly except with signs flipped here. And notice, that's how I, how I caught an error. I knew that there's a pattern as to where how these numbers relate to these numbers. And so once you got the reduced rational on form, there's a little bit of bookkeeping to do, but I didn't have to do a single interesting algebra operation. I didn't have to multiply by 2, divide by 3, anything like that. The uh, in, information is basically encoded in here. Which is the free variable? It's the one without a pivot. Uh, what are the, how does everything else depend on the free variable? It's all these numbers.